And I felt even though there were some crazy things, these same things are in the Bible. I'll give you an example. The marriage of Aisha, it's like, I don't know how to explain that. Like, I don't even know how to explain that. I don't know if that disproves the religion because at the end of the day, what are we using? Our subjective point of view? I mean, maybe the Christians are using that. But like I said, I feel like, for example, in the Old Testament, I don't know exactly the translation, but I have the video that talks about it where it talks about taking children as concubines, essentially, as sex slaves. And it's in, what's his name, presented this in a recent video. And you could find it in Fareed Respond's recent video. It's, I think, a guy you actually debated. I've yet to see the debate, but his name is Zakir Hussein, maybe? Is that his name? Yeah, there's a Muslim apologist named Zakir Hussein. Yeah, so he's the one who presented that verse, and I was like, okay. And then people are saying Mary is a certain age. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still in a phase of trying to learn these things myself. Well, all right, a uh, couple things here. You, you might want to, um, um, I'm not familiar with what Zakir Hussein said, but you, you might want to go ahead and take a look at uh, the passage he's referring to. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's referring to the passage um, in Numbers, but th there's, yeah, nothing, it, yeah. there's nothing in there saying have sex with these young girls. There's nothing in there saying have sex with these young girls. It's they were not under a death sentence because they weren't the ones who did some very, very bad things. You, you, you have to get the context of how they were actually part of a plot uh, with a false prophet to get the children of Israel to be led away from uh, God through sexual, basically drawing them away through, through sex, come, come join us and so on. And the past year, any, the, the, the girls who are too young to have taken part of that, taken part in that, they're not, they're not under any sort of punishment. And so the, if you just read that, you're saying, oh, keep these young girls. Ah, it must be to go have sex with them. And it's just, it's just not what the passage is saying. I thought my jokes were bad. You, you have to get the context of how they were actually part of a plot. How about a magic trick? You, you have to get the context of, you, you have to get the context of. How about a magic trick? It's, it's gone. Muhammad allowed his followers to rape their female captives stop being disingenuous ah it must be to go have sex with them and it should be honest just it's just not what the passage is saying stop being disingenuous just it's just not what the passage is saying be honest just it's just not what the passage is saying Muhammad allowed his followers to rape their female captives, their war captives. You go out, uh, you win a battle, uh, a lot of the men will be killed, the women will be taken captive, and what do you do with these women? Interestingly, David Wood said this, made a statement about Islam allowing the rape of captive women. He said this sitting next to a guy called Sam Shamoon, who himself has connected Numbers chapter 31 with Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 14. And the interesting thing is in Numbers chapter 31, the children of Israel have a battle and the soldiers spared some of the women uh, and animals. And they came to Moses, who's obviously a prophet of God, who is Jesus, according to David Wood. And Moses said, why have you spared all these women, all these girls and all these children and donkeys, etc.? Slay them all. But keep for yourselves, that these are the key words, take for yourselves the female children. Now, biblical scholars mention that this phrase, take for yourselves the female children, means take them as concubines or wives. Now, the interesting thing is, Sam Shamoon, who's sitting next to David Wood, he actually connected Numbers 31 to Deuteronomy chapter 20. Now, the interesting thing about Deuteronomy chapter 20, where it tells you to marry these um, women that you desire in battle, is in verse 14, in, in the Hebrew is clear, but you have to go to the right Bible translation to find this. In the Good News Bible, this is what Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 14 says, 
Later, if you no longer want her, you are to let her go free since you forced her to have intercourse with you. So let's put this together. Numbers 31 says that you can keep female children, prepubescent children for yourselves. Deuteronomy chapter 20 implies, uh, says that you can marry them and it implies that they were allowed to have forced, in other words, rape, intercourse with them. So according to Sam Shimon, who's sitting next to David Wood, the Bible allows, Christianity allows for you to rape prepubescent girls. There's nothing in there saying have sex with these young girls. And this guy wants to speak about Islam, but there's no such thing in Islam. We, we all know this, and any Muslim with his head screwed on knows that you're not allowed to do this. But yet he has to admit this because the guy sitting next to him affirms this. Right, right. Oh, well, very interesting. Ah, it must be to go have sex with them. And it's just, it's just not what the passage is saying. No, prepare for the shock. I said prepare for the shock. Read the text and see that it is God speaking supernaturally through Moses. The same God who knows all things and sees all things is the same God who can tell them, here are the virgins, set them apart, and protect them as an act of grace and mercy. They didn't have to touch them physically. They didn't have to sleep with them to determine whether they were virgins or not. They had God there to reveal it to them. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. When you go out to war against your enemies, and Yahweh your God gives them into your hand, and you take them captive, and you see among them captives a beautiful woman, and you desire to take her to be your wife, and you bring her home to your house, she shall shave her head and pare her nails. Signs of mourning. Mourning the loss of her loved ones. Mourning the loss of her loved ones. Mourning the loss of her loved ones. She shall take off the clothes in which she was captured, and she'll remain in your house and lament her father and her mother a full month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband. After that, you may go into her and be her husband. Which captive woman in her right mind would want to willfully sleep with her captor who has just murdered her family, her father, uncle, and relatives? Which captive woman in her right mind would want to willfully sleep with her captor who has just murdered her family, her father, uncle, and relatives? I like this job. I like it. And then again, I would go back to that verse which you said I am basically didn't completely understand it. I'll have to go back and assess it but the verse that that guy zucker hussein brought up where i that was one of the things where i thought oh i guess christianity is no better is because it's saying children concubines and the muslim inter interpretation of it was like you said you said they were it's because they didn't have sex that they were being brought whereas the muslim interpretation is they are being brought because they only were willing to have sex with virgins and due to the fact that children are virgins by nature most likely that they are now bringing these virgins to use as sex slaves and concubines so again, I'll have to check that one out specifically. This is like new to me, so. Oh, even, I mean, no, well, in, in Israel, if you, if you were to take a female captive, if you were to take a female captive, then you would have to marry her. Which captive woman in her right mind would want to willfully sleep with her captor who has just murdered her family, her father, uncle, and relatives? And if things didn't work out, she was supposed to go away as a free woman. So it's very different from, uh, taking a captive in Islam, being allowed to have sex with her and then just selling her at the, uh, at the, at the local market. But yeah, check that out. And, um, anyway, what I was pointing out is even in Israel, when they're taking, when they're taking captives, um, they have to marry those captives. And the point here is, yeah, this wasn't because this wasn't because, oh, they're young girls that you get to have sex with. It's these girls were the ones that didn't participate in this crime, and therefore they will not be held accountable for that. Right. Now, you could interpret it as, you could interpret, because it doesn't say, you could interpret that as, and then right. they, they grabbed these young girls and they all took them back to their tent. It's not what it says. You have to read that into the text. But yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead and read the passage and get a Christian perspective and get a, a Muslim perspective and then see right. 
um, you know, see what you think. I said, your problem is getting compounded. Islam offers you a solution. You laugh at us. I said, the laugh is on you. The laugh is on you. You know, the Bible does say that the Holy Spirit is within us. As the Holy Spirit dwells within us, uh, the Bible also speaks about how truth dwells within us. After that, you may go into her and be her husband. Ah, it must be to go have sex with them. And it's just, it's just not what the passage is saying. This wasn't because, oh, they're young girls that you get to have sex with. If you were to take a female captive, then you would have to marry her. Which captive woman in her right mind would want to willfully sleep with her captor who has just murdered her family, her father, uncle, and relatives? If you were to take a female captive, then you would have to marry her. This wasn't because, oh, they're young girls that you get to have sex with. What? It, you're all over the place. You're fumbling all over the place. It's embarrassing. What? It, what, it, what is happening to you? Where is the, why is the spirit deserting people? One more time. One more time. When I read the word Yahweh, the Jews won't even say it. They will not even say the word that is so holy. One more time. Okay, okay. Well then, let's see if they're consistent. In Numbers chapter 31, it's very, very clear on the orders of Jesus, who is the Lord. Yeah, Jesus, who's allegedly the Lord. On his orders, and the orders of the prophet of Jesus, Moses, um, the Israelites, um, Israelite soldiers are told to take the female children for themselves. Now the phrase, take the children for yourselves, means take them as concubines or take them as your wives. How come? What games are you people playing? Female children and they were allowed to consummate the marriages with these female children according to some of the biggest scholars, uh, academic scholars and um, many rabbinical sources. Muhammad allowed his followers to rape their female captives. When you come with lies and deceit stuff like that, then you really you, you embarrass yourself more than anything else. Alright, so listen, why don't you give me a call when you want to start taking things a little more seriously. Here's my card.